RMJ movie reviews uh, coming out of hiatus and hibernation for another movie review again. This is an on the fly movie review. Well, um, this is a movie review of Glass. The um, long awaited, anticipated, uh, I I'm not really sure of uh, into this trilogy. Um, we didn't know it was a trilogy until last year when Split came out, or two years ago, whenever it was, of the Unbreakable Split franchise. Uh, M. Night Shalaman. Shalaman, Shalaman, Shalaman. Uh, when The Sixth Sense came out, my junior year of high school, um, I saw the previews for it, and uh, I See Dead People. This was before I See Dead People was a big... Uh, Thing where everybody was saying it all the time, and I was just kind of like, oh, okay, all right, I see dead people, okay, whatever. Uh, an old girlfriend at the time said it was great. She came back, I was like, it was really good, it was really good. And this is like pre YouTube spoilers, and she just told me the movie. She was just like, she was just like, well, it turns out he's really dead, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, guys, spoilers. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And then when I saw the movie, I knew what was happening before. But I thought it was, it was a good movie. I didn't realize uh, New Kids on the Block, Donnie Wahlberg was in it. You know, great movie. Unbreakable. Uh, I didn't see that till video, but I remember the reception was lukewarm. I had a, a friend of mine who saw it, him and his girlfriend, and they were just kind of like, oh, it was okay. And when I saw it on video, folks, I read it from Blockbusters, I really liked Unbreakable. Um, I thought it ended anticlimactically, but um, that finale with Bruce Willis uh, fighting the maintenance guy in the house, that, that was a very creepy and disturbing, uh, unsettling uh, finale to that movie. That was a very... That's a, that's a creepy scene. Um, but aside from, um, you know, in the big reveal that Samuel Jackson set up the whole train crash, which was pretty good, uh, it kind of ended anticlimactically, but I, I love Unbreakable. I thought it was a great movie. Um, kind of, I, I love Signs, and pretty much after Signs, like everybody else, The Village was kind of what I fell off and just kind of came back to the movies periodically. The Mark Wahlberg one, I was working at a theater. Everybody hated it. Uh, I watched two minutes of it and I was done. Um, I pretty much just haven't caught up with them. After the happening and Lady in the Water, I pretty much had just not paid any attention to his movies. But anyway, I saw Split, liked it. I I was walking out the theater. I turned around. I was like, Bruce Willis? Where'd Bruce Willis come from? The dude from Unbreakable? And I'm like, all right, sign me up. Cool. And then uh, now this movie. Um... Glass was, um, it was okay. It was okay. Um, I'm just going to start with the good. Uh, I thought in the very first half of this movie, and you will see this trend across all YouTube movie reviews, I thought the way they merged Unbreakable with Split, I thought in the first and second act of this movie, I thought it was very well done. Um, I really love the way they merged the characters, um, the way they merged those two movies together. I don't know if M. Light Shalomon had pre-planned that or not, but I thought they, they merged very well together in the beginning of the movie. Um, and, uh, you know, it kind of shows you what Bruce Willis and his kid from the first movie have been up to, played by the same, uh, at the time was a child actor, now he's a grown man, but that's nice continuity-wise. So it shows kind of what they've been up to since we found out about Bruce Willis' superpowers, we find out what Sam Jackson has been up to, and we find out what the Beast guy has been up to, which is pretty much still doing what he was doing in Split, which is, you know, kidnapping uh, cheerleader girls and then eventually eating them up and devouring them and, you know, doing his Split personality routine. Um, they meet, uh, they, they, um, and they end up in this asylum uh, or mental institution, the three of them being examined by this psychiatrist lady. This is kind of where the movie, I believe, is going to lose people or they're going to be with it. Um, now I'm going to go on to um, where I kind of feel the movie kind of fell apart. Uh, first of all, this movie's too long. It is too long. Uh, I don't know. IMDb said it, or not IMDb, but online it said it was two hours and six minutes. I mean, to me, it felt like a Michael Bay Transformers movie. It felt like it was two hours and 50 minutes. I mean, it, I was just like, come on, get on with this. It felt like there was a lot of filler, a lot of things that were on that scenes that I, I just really didn't feel need to be in the movie. 
Um, you know, I, I, I've seen enough movies over time to know that the previews don't mean anything. The previews are put together by somebody else, and the movie is is going to be totally different from what the previews advertise. I, I'm movie savvy enough to understand that. I've read enough reviews to know that this was a lower budgeted film, even by inflation standards, from Unbreakable. So this was going to be uh, a more modest movie in the storytelling. But even still, there's some things you just don't have to put in the movie. And I felt this, this movie had a lot of unnecessary filler. It just could have been taken out. It just wasn't necessary. There were some times where it was good because it set up certain things that characters did and it was like okay that made sense but there was a lot of things they could have took out um uh the other negative the finale uh the finale is really gonna lose a lot of people and i'm the next one on the list because it lost me too um my thing is if you you're building something up to be one thing I know people can say it's artistic, you want to deliver, but if this is the end to a trilogy, a trilogy, you have to have the finale. I'm sorry, you just have to. I understand some people want to go, oh, well, we want to go against the rules, we want to be artistic. Well, if you want to go against the rules and be artistic, you know, go make a YouTube movie. You can do whatever you want. But if this is theatrical, we're going to go to the theater on a Friday night, we're paying our money. I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be like a Man of Steel, Metropolis blowing up style, but we, you gotta give us something. You can't cheat the audience. You just can't, man. And I felt this was a situation where, um, even though I didn't read any spoilers before I saw this movie, um, I was well aware that, that rumblings were that it was anticlimactic and it was unsatisfying. And even had I not read it, I still would have felt that same way. Um, I'm not going to give away any spoilers of how it ends, but, uh, it really just, you know, I, I, man, um, and it's drawn out too long. I mean, there's, you know, that you've got seen parts in the previews where James McAvee and Bruce Willis, you know, the good guy and the master villain, well, Samuel Jackson's really the master, master villain, but the second in command, you know, uh, you know, basically, Wesley and Jimmy, that's a Roadhouse reference, is, is Samuel Jackson and James McAvee. When James McAvee and Bruce Willis finally fight, um, you know, it starts out good. I'm like, all right, okay, they're getting it on. And then some security guys break up part of their battle. Then James McAvee is fighting the security guys, Bruce Willis, is, and it's like, it stops their fight. And I'm like, why are they doing this? Why are we distracting from the hero and the villain fighting? Okay? I, I just don't understand why. And then Bruce Willis goes off and does some minute task while the villain is, like, biting into some guy's neck. I'm just like, what? why is this being drawn out like this? Why is he doing this when he needs to be focused on taking him out? Why? That sort of stuff. Um... But really, that, that the movie is just it's too drawn out, unnecessary scenes, and that finale, I think, is really... And I'm not going to give it away, but I really think that the finale is just going to be uh, basically the stake in the heart to anybody who is really a fan of Unbreakable and Split. If you like both of those movies, this finale is going to be a stake in the heart and just uh, a slap in the face to you. It really is. Um... Uh, I, I really like Unbreakable, and I like Split. I'm not a gigantic Uber fan like these two movies behind me. Uh, but even still, even with me just being just a, a, a liker of those films, I, I, I just felt cheated, man. I, I really felt cheated. So that's going to do it. Um, let's hop back to the good. Uh, McAvee, fantastic. He's fantastic. He's great. Um, the personality switches back and forth kind of did start to annoy me a little bit you know um his acting style is uh it got to be a little bit hammy but 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 it was kind of hammy and split too and it was intentionally hammy you know what i'm saying it, it's been when you do multiple personalities in films it, it's never and from what i understand that's that's supposed to be not a real thing even though i know i studied that in psychology in college uh 
supposedly it is uh, split personality is not real but when you show it on film it always has to be over exaggerated same thing like exorcisms you know exorcisms and, and and telekinesis always have to and all that kind of stuff it has to be it has to be theatrical so it makes sense for it but after a while it kind of starts to got get annoying especially during the finale when uh, a little young former uh, kidnap victim was holding McAvee, it was just like, oh my God. I remember I was in the theater. I leaned back and I'm like, okay, I get it, man. Please get on with it, please. Um, but again, he's fantastic. Samuel L. Jackson. And I, this is what I'm going to compare two veteran actors. Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis. They've both been in the game equal amounts of time. Their best work on screen together was Die Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, split between whether how fans feel about Die Hard with a Vengeance. Us old school fans, most of us really love it. There are those who don't like Die Hard with a Vengeance. But I don't think anybody can deny, regardless of how you feel about that film, that Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis's dynamic in Die Hard with a Vengeance was spectacular. It was fantastic. And Unbreakable, different dynamic. But still, very good again. They don't really get... They don't have their moment in this movie where they... They have an interaction, but it's off screen, so it doesn't look like Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis will work together. But Samuel L. Jackson, regardless of um, some of the, the movies that he's made to, you know, support his family, you know, because it's like passion projects will be this. And then there's like red box movies where it's like, hey, I got to feed my family and I got to pay my bills and put it into my retirement and all that kind of stuff. Samuel L. Jackson is still, at his core, a character actor. He's still a character actor to this day. Sam Jackson is still a character actor. And he's such a skilled actor that he can still bring out that. Because even though he does the, I'm Sam M.F. and Jackson, he can still bring out the stuff that we saw in Jungle Fever or the stuff that we saw in, I even go far as back as like Strictly Business or Juice or Patriot Games. Uh, really older films that he did from way back when he can still I, I even go far Death by Temptation y'all might know about that um um The Return of Superfly really obscure Samuel Jackson looked that up guys really old school but Sam Jackson can still bring out those old school character actor moments and he brings it out here he is not doing the Sam Jackson big budget hammy mf and i'm sam jackson acting he's bringing out his old school spike lee independent character sam jackson acting moments and he's fantastic now bruce willis uh i'm not gonna say anything negative about bruce willis I, and i know this you know that there's this kind of a you know fans have uh you know felt betrayed by bruce willis because you know he did the, that horrible fifth die hard movie um, how you feel about how you feel about number four is debatable. I'll let y'all decide. Um, but he did that horrible fifth Die Hard movie. Uh, Kevin Smith has has documented his behavior on the set of Cop Out. You've seen in interviews how nasty he's been to some interviewers. Um, Bruce Willis, uh, just from observation, I you know I, who knows the man personally? I don't know, but I'm just saying from somebody who's grown up watching Bruce Willis from the time I was a little kid, from when my mother watched Moonlighting all the way up until now. Um, I don't know whether the man is... I know he did get hurt on some of the action films. I think Die Hard 1, he had suffered some hearing damage, and, and I think he has sustained... Uh, some physical trauma on some of these action films so I, I don't know if it's combined with that or the heavy workload of doing films and traveling and press um Bruce Willis seems to be drained of any kind of creative energy and, and he really seems to not enjoy the process the observation he does not seem to enjoy the process anymore especially as indicated by a lot of these red box movies that he's doing because Bruce Willis is a very capable actor he's a very strong actor um People might say he can play a certain type, but he is capable of more than that. Um, but I think by all accounts, I think this man is tired. I, I just don't think he enjoys the process of, of the press and the movie making in the hours. He just doesn't enjoy the process anymore and probably combined with 
you know, the things that come with stardom of the of the stalking and, and, and these crazed, lunatic, mentally ill fans who don't know how to control themselves like normal people. I just, I, I think Bruce Willis is done creatively uh, now. But in the first half of this movie, he's very good. He's, he's very good. And, and I kind of saw a light in him, even though he's not getting, he's not, he's not being as flashy as McElvey, obviously, his character wasn't, wasn't that in Unbreakable, and he's not, um, really digging with some subtle character stuff like Sam Jackson is, um, he, he does show a sparkle, and I did see some light in Bruce Willis come back in some of his performing. Unfortunately, he sidelined for most of the movie, um, that doesn't surprise me at all, that does not surprise me at all, because, you know, as indicated when he did the the second Expendables movie and all the little red box movies things he he's doing. I mean, look, Bruce Willis is the man is tired. He put his work in, so he's just trying to do his three days of work and bounce. I don't know how many days he did on this movie, but I know it wasn't as much as uh, James McAvoy. At least it doesn't look like it. But he's sidelined for the most of the movie. He comes back in a little bit for the finale, but he really doesn't get to do much. Um, but I will say, in the very beginning of the movie, in the first act, I mean, Bruce Willis is still magnetic on screen, regardless of him being an older man now. And I love the fact that he just gone ahead and rocks the bald head. I mean, with the hair on the side, the white beard, he still has that old school... Bruce Willis is kind of slowly transforming into like what Clint Eastwood was like in movies like The Rookie or In the Line of Fire or Charles Bronson in the in the 80s uh, Death Wish sequels. This, that's the, the arena Bruce Willis has entered into now. And he still has a lot of charisma. He still has that that Bruce Willis kind of walk. And he still has that, you know, that that Bruce Willis smirk with the charisma. There's still a lot of Hudson Hawk last Boy Scout in there. He's still a very good actor. Um, I just, I think the man is just burned out and I, and I, and I really think, I, I just think that the, he, he's creatively just burned out now, but I will say, um, in the first half of the movie, I, I thought we got a lot of that old school Bruce Willis. Um, overall, that was a long review. I'm sorry guys, but I, I just thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. I, I thought it had a very strong first act. Uh, when they were in, 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 this, in the institution, I was kind of with it, but it just was just drawn out too long. And um, ultimately, that third act, I think, just just killed, killed it for me. Um, I'm not looking forward to see where they go from here. But it, but it, it, was, it, it was all right. Strong first half, uh, okay middle, and just a not good third act as a viewer, in my opinion. So thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Don't forget to hit the little bell, leave comments down below. And it's up to you guys whether you want to check out Glass or not. RMJ Movie Reviews, I will be back soon.